folks across America could share. Now, unfortunately, we know that organized labor is under attack. About 60 years ago, in 1953, about 35% of the American workforce had collective bargaining coverage. But as of 2010, we went from about 35% in the 1950s to just under 7% in 2010. Where has that gotten us? I think it's put us not in a better position as middle class America or working families. It's put us in a worse position. And we saw the attacks in Wisconsin and we saw the attacks on collective bargaining in Ohio that the folks had to roll back after the people of Ohio rose up in opposition. I was proud as a member of the state legislature at the time in 2012 to support the effort to unionize by a group of very courageous cable workers in Brooklyn, organized by the Communication Workers of America. They voted in the face of significant pressure to the contrary to join the union and to organize a chapter in order to fight for better wages and for stronger health care and the possibility of a better retirement. Unfortunately, the courageous nature of those workers has not been met with a negotiated contract. The collective bargaining process has failed them to date. In fact, more than 20 of them were unceremoniously terminated earlier this year. And they were only brought back in the face of tremendous pressure by public servants at all levels of government. But more than 18 months later, from the moment in which they voted to join the union, they still are in limbo, they have no contract, and in many ways their lives have been turned upside down. In fact, every other worker in the company that employed these cable workers has been granted a substantial raise while these individuals remain in limbo. We're hopeful that we can do better, that we can bring the NLRB back to life, that it can serve as an objective entity to regulate the relationship between the workforce and employers across America. There's employers who want to do the right thing. We should encourage that because it's good for America. And in this economic recovery that we have right now, there are a lot of companies that are doing pretty well. But there are a lot of workers who are still struggling. One of the things that I think we have to confront here in the Congress is the fact that we have a very schizophrenic economic recovery. Stock market is way up. Corporate profits way up. The productivity of the American worker is way up, yet unemployment remains stubbornly high and wages remain stagnant. How can that be when corporate America is doing so well? When investors in the stock market are doing so well, when objective measures show that the productivity of the American worker has increased significantly, but the American worker, in terms of their ability to live and pursue the middle class dream, has in many ways been left behind. These are questions that I'm hopeful this Congress will confront as we fight our way through sequestration and 
deal with the debt ceiling and a potential default, God forbid, that we have to confront next month and we work our way deliberatively through the question of whether a military strike in Syria is appropriate, let's not forget the fact that what makes America great is the capacity for people to work hard, to purchase a home, to raise their family in safety and security with the ability to live a life where they provide for themselves and for their families and are able to hand to a, a generation of Americans that come behind them, hopefully in America that is more prosperous, not less prosperous. And we in the CBC believe that the best way to get there is not to continue to attack organized labor, but to recognize what it has done for this country and to strengthen organized labor as we move forward. And with that, I yield back the balance of my time.